Hello, everybody. Welcome along. This is another episode of Main Freight Rugby and Week 5 of the Bunnings Heartland Championship. Now, historically, these Heartland games have been very, very hard to win on the road. Home teams have had a heck of a big winning advantage. But in the last couple of weeks, that's turned around. And the visiting sides have had some wins. Now, have we got a trend here? Or is it just one of those little quirks of the draw? I don't know, but I know somebody who might. And that's my old mate, Ian Jones. Carmo, what do you reckon? Yeah, kia ora, mate. I'm not sure I can answer that question, but I know the, the, this extraordinary year is just getting better. The level of rugby is at the highest level, which we expect. The competition with player spots, I know, is going to come down to the wire. If not having Sam Kane, the All Black captain in the Heartland Championship last week was good enough. Well, the All Black Brotherhood has come together and we're going to have a party in Ruatoria like never seen before. So that is going to be one of the highlight matches here in week five of the Bunnings Heartland Championship. But what else is coming up this round on Main Freight Rugby? Yeah, you're right, Carmo. Everybody's interested in that East Coast against Buller game, so we'll show you that first. But there are a couple of other games that are of equal importance. Thames Valley and Mid-Canterbury from Te Aroha. Whanganui and Horofanua Kapiti from Whanganui. And North Otago and South Canterbury, the Nomaru. Those are all top of the table clashes. But to East Coast. In 2012, these were the darlings of New Zealand rugby. In 2013, they beat Poverty Bay. 54 games later, they still don't have a win. Has that horse bolted? Uh, kia ora whanau. my name is Paul Brooking and with me is one of the, one of the, I suppose, the champions of Ngāti Pro East Coast and today he plays his uh, 50th game. Sammy Parks, how are you feeling? Yeah, kia ora Paul, you yeah, know, feeling good eh, going into this game. It's an exciting occasion, I've been looking forward to this game ever since I started playing for the coast, way back when I was 18, so yeah, it's a good day. So can you tell us, who was your first game against in the blue jersey? Uh, so first game was a just a traditional against Poverty Bay on the Queen's birthday, but then I played uh, against West Coast in 2012 it was our first Heartland game. And uh, uh, with 50 games in the Blue Jersey, no doubt you've played with a few uh, legends in the Blue Jersey. Who's some of the names you, you've remembered over the years? Yeah, well, probably my, my brother, who was probably the reason I started sort of playing for the coast. So we're born and bred in Tolaga Bay, and um, yeah, the fire started burning for me to play for the coast um, when I was at school and Ben was playing for the coast, um, yeah, so ever since then I sort of, you know, dreamt to, to play for the coast. And uh, it's club day today and I see that uh, they've pulled a few of the old corals out to sit on the bench and uh, boost, the, boost the chances today. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know how Jose's sort of strung, a lot, strung that together, but um, boys will take it. Yeah. What, what's it feel like to have uh, someone of that calibre sitting on the bench? Yeah, it's, it's cool. Eh? You can just hear the talk that he gives in, in team runs and that. Um, yeah, it's it's specific, accurate, and uh, yeah, good boys are taking it on board. Oh well, bro, all the best for today. Uh, congratulations on your 50 caps uh, for Nati Pro. Here we we. Nati. Francis Mining Buller, under the leadership of Anthony Ellis, they're going to have to shore up up front today. Number eight forward Petrus de Kock has been one of their best. He's a tough forward. He's a hard-nosed forward. Andrew Norton Taylor, a living legend. Skillful, classy, Elias Satora on the left wing, Luke Barrow on the right wing. These guys have come here to compete. They're not going to give it to the coast. They're not going to give them anything, as a matter of fact. So here on Club Day at Whakarua Park in Ruatoria, Ngāti Pro East Coast, under the captaincy of Honia Hairua, a patriot in sky blue. Watch out for this locking pair of Gabe Takani and Trent Boswell Wakefield. They've turned over and they are tough to turn over. In his 50th game, Sam Parks, halfback extraordinary these days, Tarangi Fraser, who's been superb. But, of course, the big story of this team this week has been who's not out there to start. Bailey uh, Lavava, Ma'a Nonu, and Jose Gear, the head coach. Nice win there. Looked like Boswell Wakefield. Coast going to the right. They hand it back. A uh, question of a... Uh, Truck and trailer there. Let's see, uh, I see Lower Quiet. Trying to uh, make it scrappy for the coast. Tadangi Fraser breaks through. Tadangi Fraser long pass. The coast. Tana Potai. Tana. Tana Potai in the corner. The big guy in the corner jams it in. Well, what a long pass. Lovely pass. Tadangi Fraser. 
Tana Potai and the Coaster in their first one. Here on the Wet and Forget replay, Tana Potai was a long pass. Tadangi Fraser, great hands there from Tana Potai. The rugby gods have smiled on him. So Jacob Wet today, good work from the loose head prop for Buller. Now with some rhythm here, Buller. Buller looking strong. That's a Tuala Torsosi. Played by Buller. Ferguson. Ferguson caught there by Perrin Manuel. With the mandible claw there on him. Okay, tough passing here from uh, Buller. Buller getting close. Didn't at the bottom of the pad. Where's the cock? Got to watch out for the cock. Buller still short. Big fella there. Lewong Ai. Here's Norton Taylor. Norton Taylor. Last pass. Beautiful last pass. Twilius of Torta. Torta off the last pass by Norton Taylor. Great Buller try. Here on the win, forget replay. Brilliant rugby here from Buller. Coming back immediately. Sensing the danger. Letting the coast get a big lead. Norton Taylor hits Torta with a with a grand pass. Great assist. Coast by two points. Norton Taylor, chase there from the coast, cutting down his options. Here's Tarangi Fraser to the halfway mark. Tarangi Fraser holds the ball, ball in uh, that right hand, in there for the hook pass. Uh, pass it with the same facility as if you were, uh, as when you carry it with two hands. That's Parks. So the coast probing on the blind side here. Honi Hainua back inside to Atena Potai, like a truck on pass, pass to Parks. Pass to Parks, Parks will score, Parks scores in his 50th game, got a great pass there, Sam Parks. A magic moment, Sam Parks was there to back him up and the coast go in. Well, their second try and now 12-5. It's the creativity of the coast and today at least their backs and forwards coming together. Sam Parks, one of the greatest things about his rugby is a support play, and Parks there in support, surged towards the line and grounded the ball. Good rugby. Ferguson, after the coast lost the ball forward. Coast with one tight head. First half, Norton Taylor. They're running very hard and very good stuff there from Toe. Edenimo Toe. Norton Taylor has it. Through a dummy, supported by Ferguson. Ferguson there now to clear. Ferguson must clear, he must. Now willing Buller to open side flank of Kahutia Prata. Penalty now on the coast, and certainly they're getting the rub of the green at the moment. Some days you can't buy a penalty, and other days it seems to keep running your way. This is Tedangi Fraser, who can do no wrong at the moment. Tedangi Fraser, 21 5, 16 points up. Tedangi Fraser, it's a long drive down the middle for 24 points to five. A 19 point game at halftime. Tedangi Fraser signs off on the first half with a long kick down the middle. Not very often you see the coast in this dominating position, but they certainly are now. Jacob Wentley, the big guys have tried their hearts out here. Hearts must be, you know, their chest must be close to bursting here, the effort, the heat. Buller, Tony Ida were trying to hold him up, trying to hold the cock up. Ruling there is trying. If that's gone to the cock, a well deserved try. Petros de Cock. So here on the Wet and Forget replay, number eight four, Petros de Cock, who tirelessly has slogged and fought and gotten to the line and scored. Anthony Ellis. Throws for uh, Lin Wong Ai, marvellous athlete. Norton Taylor has the kick charge down. Parks a hat trick. Parks a hat trick. Yes, he got there. Oh, no, it's not Parks. It's tough. How stupid did he get in? Unbelievable. Tough House Stewart, the way he took off. Well, Tough House Stewart now on the board. Don't forget Tough House Stewart. Scored a marvellous try last week, and he comes here and gets another one. For the first time this season, the Coast have six tries. 
Costa all over Fuller at the moment. Okay, for Bollingford, Parks, another move on the blind side, Tedangi Fraser. Good stuff. The Coast are short. They are short. The Coast are going to score, Jack Richardson. That'll be a popular try. Jack Richardson of Ruatoria City, Ngati Pro East Coast, congratulated by Verdon Bartlett, Tedangi Fraser and company. Jack Richardson. What a wonderful thing it is that Richardson should score this try on the day that a moment of silence was observed for Ben Kaiwai, a wonderful city club man and servant of Ngati Pro East Coast Rugby. Ma Nonu onto the, onto the field by Fili Levave, Samoan International number 22, Jose Gear. The general on the floor. This is the 30th game between Buller and Ngati Pro East Coast. Buller of 121, the Coast State. And here, now the coast, Tedangi Fraser with a double. And Tedangi Fraser, who's had a fabulous season at first five, has gone into score. Beautifully done. And here on the Wet and Forget replay, 48 points to 12. Tedangi Fraser with a double, so strong, and really a handful as a first five. 48 points to 12 for the first time. Since 2012, the Coast are about to bring up 50 points. Norton Taylor, good play there, uh, Dallison. Dallison, the fat man's track. Dallison, Dor Manua two. They could be on here, uh, Buller. In a Nemo toe, they've turned it over. Penalty now, Buller. Not sure of the reason for it, but for whatever reason, Buller penalty. And on the charge there, and getting across, Mitieli Kaluta Jabeki with a well-deserved try for Buller. A team of indefatigable heart. Here he is on the wet and forget replay. Mitieli Kaluta Jabeki timed his run brilliantly. And their side through. This for 50 to 26. Norton Taylor with a conversion attempt that has gone through the posts. And finally, the coast. Ngati Pro East Coast are victorious here on Main Freight Rugby. Their first win in eight years, 18 days. The coast in their hundredth year have turned a new page. Oh, mate, it was brilliant. Just uh, overjoy and probably blessed in terms of uh, getting the chance to don the jersey with uh, Jose Gear. I've spent most of my career within the Hurricanes jersey, so uh, no, nah, truly grateful. Some of what you saw from the local players, what did you see from them? Oh, I guess the boys are uh, barred up in terms of what they've been feeling the last few years, I guess, and uh, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. It's all about belief, really, and uh, playing for each other, so uh, upward, upwards and onwards now. Got to give, a, give credit to our, our homeboys who worked hard during the off-season, and I worked hard out there today in the heat. Last word, there's nothing stopping you now. Yeah, winning breeds winning, um, so we'll try and keep the ball rolling and um, keep our whānau with us and take it down south. Two masters in now for Wairarapa Bush against West Coast. This is the Coast's third visit to the North Island this year. They've won one, they've lost one. They'll be looking to break that deadlock today. Matt, what does it mean to put the Wairarapa Bush crest on your, on your chest, mate? Oh look, it's a huge honour. Um, growing up in the region, have watched these guys play rugby since you know I was knee high to to them, and uh, to finally get out here and put a bush jersey on, it's, yeah, it's something pretty special. Excellent. And uh, you are uh, almost knee high to Matthew, anyway. Uh, you're not the tallest guy on the block, but you uh, got that explosive speed. Hasn't seemed to disappear over the years. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you eat, mate? What's what's the fitness regime? Oh, just um, just do lots of cardio and less weights, probably, yeah, and just try to maintain our speed. That's it. Rory the Stag all masked up as West Coast make their way onto Memorial Park. The artificial surface of Memorial Park, the only first class ground in New Zealand that has that. Captain Fun Flight driving it ahead. Oh, good quick hands. And here's Bush. Bush charges to the line. Lewis Bush. Good, good play from Warrapa Bush. They straighten it up. And then good quick hands there from Mumu Falaniko. He's the man who often scores the try. Today he was the provider. 
That's where we like to see an attacking line-out. McLean goes high. It's stuck in the back. Lua Tua's got it. Lua Tua scores. Lua Tua gets the second try for Wairapa Bush. Have a look here on the wet and forget replay. He's got the ball stuck up on his rump there like he doesn't want it. The boys say, no, no, tuck it under. Tuck it under, Vessi, and drive through and score. So that's exactly what he did. West Coast, Ford. Ford going close. And I think that's Jackman, is it? Is that Lewis Jackman who's come up with the try? Yes, it is, with the big mop of hair. Lewis Jackman, there he is, number six, sort of lurking and gets the ball and with a little bit of help from Trent Lawn, drives it across. Jacob Lowe with the conversion attempt, which is over. So that's a very, very handy seven points for West Coast. They go to the break down to Wairapa Bush by 16 to 7. Back of the line out ball for Sopa. Tucked in the back is Lawn. This drive's gone a fair old distance. There's a couple of backs coming in trying to help out, seeing if they can make a difference. I think they can. Regan Stanton wants to get his hands on the ball. Look. Now the ball is fed. And a halfback, Ferguson, with his second try of the season, saw a huge blind side. The defence had been sucked in. All the defenders were in close to the mall. And all he had to do was head to the corner flag and put the ball down, Jared Ferguson. Defensive scrum for Wairapa Bush. Well, that's a huge scrum from West Coast. That's massive. That is a massive scrum. It's earned them a penalty. It's earned them the opportunity to get into the lead late in the second half. Lowe's kick is a good one. And West Coast lead by two. And the local fans aren't too happy. Overthrown. But I think the tail gun has got it, hasn't it? Yeah, Dan Ford is at the back of the line out and he's managed to tidy up what could have been an embarrassing situation. On halfway. Jackman. Oh, man there that might not have been holding his weight. Number 19, Jason Van Flate has been penalised. And this gives the opportunity for Haira to win the game for Wairapa Bush. A late penalty goal, and the Bush have won it by 19 to 18. Oh, that was a good competition, really even. Yeah, I mean, we make it tough for ourselves, but um, it's uh, hopefully we uh, can carry on from this, get a few more wins. What went well for you fellas? The first 10 minutes. Um, after that, we probably played helter skelter rugby and made it really difficult, but uh, I'm pleased the boys dug deep at the end and for more to land that kick and then to, to hold them out. Credit to the boys, yeah. Bring more good rugby still to come on this week five edition of Main Freight Rugby. The Swamp Fox are up next, then we're off to Wanganui, then Gisborne. We're going to finish with a real belt at Onomaru before finding up this week's Main Freight True Blue. Catch it all right here on Main Freight Rugby. Main You're back with Main Freight Rugby and our wonderful group of sponsors. Main Freight, of course, but also still Isuzu D-Max and Wet and Forget. We also get support from Sky Sport and New Zealand Rugby. And all those folks have got together and brought Main Freight Rugby to Te Aroha for Thames Valley against Mid-Canterbury. Second against fifth. Thames Valley have won all four of their games. Mid-Canterbury have had just the one loss to North Otago a week or two ago. Good afternoon and welcome to the Sunday Te Aroha. My name's Cody Muir and I'm joined with arguably the best player Waikato's ever had, Dwayne Sweeney. How are you today, Dwayne? Yeah, very good, thank you, Muir. So what brings you over to this side of the East Waikato, mate, coming to join the Valley this year? Your father played for the Union, that's right? Yeah, yeah, Dad played here um, yeah, back in the 80s, so uh, it's always been you know, part of my life growing up. Used to come across to Te Aroha and watch the doctor done when Dad was playing for Waiho growing up. So yeah, it's, all, it's been a big part of my rugby career, so it's pretty cool to be here now. 
Very tough game today, Mid-Canterbury. They've been going all right. One loss, I think. So uh, what have the Valley got to do to win under the mountain today? <laughs> oh, the mountain is uh, looking good today. But, yeah, no, we're... We've got a good game plan for these guys. Uh, we've got a real fit forward pack, so you included, mate. So, yeah, we're going to work hard to get make their big boys work, get around the corner and yeah, we'll unleash the speed out wide. Once upon a time, a kid about that size went to high rise, saw the big Allen P bottle. He's been a Swamp Fox fan ever since. Jaco Flaherty. Life throws it off and now to Malatai. The line from the Brighton Club. In Canterbury, New Brighton Club, I should say. And now mid Canterbury go for a run. Setter Koroi Tamana gets the pass away to take Chisman. He'll get the opening try of the afternoon. Mid Canterbury striking back after two early penalties to Thames Valley, and a conversion kick will put them in front now. Blythe reached in, gave it away to the big men. Himbere. Off to Kuroi Tamana, and then off to Chisman in the end. Bonner to Doolan. He taps it on the foot. Oh, and the bounce is favourable to Doolan. And Toddy's in. Thames Valley strike back and put themselves back in front. Well, almost a 50 metre try, as you see on the wet and forget replay. 49 metres. He had the whereabouts to put it on his boot, find the real estate he needed, and the bounce was good to him. Bonnet to Connor McVerry. Close they go here, the Swamp Foxes. Matty Axtons, he'll score it eventually. Pressure, pressure, pressure. And Matty Axtons on the end of that one. The import from the Mount Monganui Club coming into the team late with half the team unavailable due to COVID lockdowns. Now, Fred the Needle. Fred the Needle bursts up the park. Fred K. Botafilli. Can he link up? Finds Sione Atoni, who runs to the left, finds the needle again. Matty McCann. He goes close. Surely here for Thames Valley. There it is. Let's joke it to Vita Halafihi. Where did he come from? He popped up with the ball and scored the try. We'll look on the wet and forget replay. Matty McCann, the man they call Kathew. He hates cats, but he loves being a part of a try. He came close there. It was Halafihi in the end, though. Thames Valley. A prop down with a yellow card. The pressure is on. The third or fourth scrum down this area of the field. Surely they will score. And they do. Well, Thames Valley appealing for a knock-on. There would have been a penalty try, no doubt, if the knock-on was called because there was splinters all over the show. And Seta Kuroi Tamana, the number eight, held patient at the back. And Tom Rieke puts it up and through the stick. So half time and a high scoring first half here in Tiaraha. It's 32 points to 21. Thames Valley hold an 11 point lead after 40 minutes. Leroy Neals to McVerry. Neals again searching for it. Looks to be Cody Muir who takes it down there. The needle gets it off to Lafatuana. Off to Joe Cook. Who's as happy as a dog with two tails because he gets two tries today. That's his second in the corner. And you see what it means to him. Player of origin. Played for college rifles this year up in Auckland. Tally him or Paul. Off to Will Newbold. Running with the ball in one hand. Shrugs off a big hit. From Manasa Bari. Trinity McQueen plays halfback. Now Joe Cook again on the wing. He's got someone outside him. That's Cameron Drongle. Who dances around a tackle. And darts in for the try. Well, they've put it well beyond doubt now. The Thames Valley Swamp Foxes. Joe Cook 
He's been playing out of his skin today. Sold what he needed to, was looking left, through the no-look pass to the right. And Cameron, son of Mike, scores the try. So, mid-Canterbury. Oh, that's a great take from the kickoff. From Barty, outside, inside. Barty gets the ball away. And Toti Nasinger. He'll score for mid-Canterbury. Well, that is exactly what you wanted. You can see it on the wet and forget replay. Manasa Bari got a, a way to Sofai. Bari got the ball back and then in the number eight jersey, Lotte Nasinger. Niels to Cook. Fatuana, he waits for it. He gets it off to Newbold. Now, Sionia Tony. Oh, well. A big hit coming from Thomas, but popped up to love for two and a E again, and he'll score. Well, let's look on the wet and forget replay. Played first receiver on the face, love for two and a E. Sione Atoni. Well, he was given the see from Tepasu Thomas, but it didn't matter because he got the ball away to love for two and a E. And that surely will be the final play of the match with this conversion to come. Telly Hemapur. Oh, it's off the upright. And the final score, 52 points to 35. And Thames Valley remain unbeaten in the Bunnings Warehouse Heartland Championship. OK, uh, Ben Bonner, congratulations. What a fantastic game of rugby. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? You know, um... I always knew it was going to be a hard battle and the boys really fronted up and so super proud, couldn't be more proud mate. Yeah, they've got every right to be happy to Thames Valley. Whanganui and Horofanua now in the River City. Now this is a classic. Two near neighbours, fourth against third. Horofanua Kapiti, here they are there, unbeaten. Whanganui have only lost the one, that was to Mid Canterbury a couple of weeks ago. Vicky Tolfa playing his 50th game, leads out the Butcher Boys. And with the commentary, Morris West. And it's Horofanua making one of the uh, rare occurrences when they're getting into the Wanganui half. And they're heading now down into the 22. And can he be stopped? Well, um, they've got hold of there, Horrocks. And he's finally taken the ground some five metres out. It'll come back to the halfback and on to um, Barlett Robinson, who attempts a cross kick. Oh, it's a Bowden Barrett kick. And it's straight into the hands of Lennox Tovo. And it is a perfect Bowden Barrett kick there from Ash Bartlett Robinson to Lennox Tovo. What a try. That caught me snapping there. Well, here they are. Now another line out. They go deep. It's virtually uncontested. Well, I don't, I've never understood why these uncontested line outs ever seem to work. It's just as easy for the attacking side to set up as they have now, although it is rumbling across. But uh, now they get some forward movement going here through Horofanua Kapiti, and they're heading towards... There's nothing going to stop them. They're over, they're over, says... And the referee, yes, he says yes. And you can bet that's the number two that'll have that one. Bryn Gordon in for a try. Well, it's got to be done. Well, here we go now, Wanganui will need some points before half time. It's a mirror image of two weeks ago when they uh, struggled here in the first half but uh, picked up points late and got themselves back into the game as they drive forward. And here it is, uh, Horrocks will pick this ball up from the line, puts it out through to uh, Hughes, who's had a big game so far. Now, there it is for Horrocks again. Oh, it's out through the back line, one of the big fatties there. But it's uh, straight to the hands of Verda Sacy. Verda Sacy going for the line, and the referee says, yes, they're over the line. That was the big number eight, Verda Sacy there, crashing through, finally getting uh, Wanganui onto the board. And here's Wanganui. Well, they've still got another chance before half time. Well, this would be daylight robbery if they were to pick up points at this late stage of the uh, first half. But uh, they've had most of the play. But uh, do they deserve to be uh, do another try going into the half? Well, it's there for uh, Horrocks. Horrocks finds uh, Whale. Whale with uh, one of his back line crashing there. And now it's out through the line out and right out onto that left wing side to Alakeseo Vakarorogol. 
into the corner. Well, Wanganui, you have used your get out of jail free card here on this one. Let's just see what we're going to do. We've got the uh, time coming up and it'll be an attempted kick here from Ethan Robinson. And what do the touch judges say? They say it's over. Well, you've uh, got yourselves back into this game at 15-14 half time. And here we have a little presentation. I think it's to some under-18 uh, players. Well, they look a bit older than 18 as we go into the second half play now with Wanganui as it's taken down in the line out. They look to run the forward. It's once again an uncontested line out. It's the, it's the All Blacks um, all over again and it's the All Black result over here again. I think they're going to get rumbled all the way over the line. And yes, going down, it'll be the number two. It'll be Dylan Gallion with the uh, try there from that uncontested line out. This could cause a bit more problems. Wanganui running away with this game now. So here we have a feed close to the line, five metres out. Horrocks to feed. They've had control at the set pieces all day. It, well, at the scrum set pieces. And they rumble forward, they rumble forward further. It's picked up off the back by uh, the number 18, Matthew Taulafili, for his try in the 64th minute. Well, this is just getting too much for Horafanua Kapiti now. And here we are, getting close to the time now. As it's fared up. Oh, they're getting close to the line. Was that over? No, the referee says. So they'll look to feed it out again. It's there. It should come back to Horrocks. They look like they're going to try and pick and go. Oh, no, it's a close feed out, but no, still not over. It's still there for Horrocks. Horrocks feeds it out straight to Bob. Dean Whale just... Dane Whale just runs through a whale of a gap in straight underneath and un, underneath the posts and in for a try. Well, Wanganui, you've uh, done this beautifully today and run out the winners by uh, 40 points to 15. And uh, that puts them ahead of Horafanua Kapiti on the table now. I'm joined now by the uh, the 50 game man, Vicky Klofa. Well, happy boy? Yeah, very happy. Good one, so. So how come you didn't manage to get a try there? Didn't sneak in behind that uh, forward pack going forward to grab hold of one? <laughs> no, I would have got some brief on the boys if I didn't pass the ball back, so... So now let us know, go. do you remember much of the first game? Yep, yep, my first game was down in uh, Tumaru, in South Canterbury, and I remember I was watching because I was on the bench, obviously, and uh, I was just watching, and, and points got ahead of us a bit, and then I was looking at the clock, watching it time tick down, I thought, come on, coach, am I going to get on? I looked up, and it was eight minutes ago, Jumped on, I went on, and yeah, we scored two quick tries. And then um, we almost had the win, but we lost it in the last tackle. Well, except for the loss in the last tackle, that sounded pretty much like a description of today's game. We got behind by a few yeah. points and then pulled up, pulled it back, but you pulled it back and won today. Yeah, yeah. Now the boys played well, especially our, our first half. You know, we were down a bit, and then to come back to well, was at one point, and then uh, impact from the bench sort of lifted up as well. So it was good. Absolutely. Congratulations once again on 50 games. Thank you, mate. Great, great achievement. Awesome. Thank you. Every time we come to Gisborne, the sun is shining, and it's the same again today. It's warm and it's sunny, and King Country will be hoping that the sun shines on them because they haven't had a win yet this season. On the other hand, Poverty Bay are two wins and two losses, looking to get on the right side of the ledger. The crowd gathering in the shade is Toru Noa Noa leads Poverty Bay out. Noa Noa playing his blazer game today. And here's a side I hope we see a lot more of. The referee is Tiana Nawati, the second woman only to referee a Heartland Championship match. Best attacking opportunity of the game so far for King Country. Mole Mole. Oh, what an offload! A oh, terrific try. Try is going to be scored by Cody McGovern. But Mali Mole made an offload as he went to ground. Brown then gave the off pass and McGovern just scored it in the corner. Good drive coming through from Poverty Bay towards the line just short. I can see Talmata getting in close. They're driving to the line. And that's Tamanui Hill, I think, with the headgear on. Yes, it is. So Hill gets the try. Good strong work from the Poverty Bay forward pack. Oh, a little bit of 
fumble in midfield, but they've picked it up nicely and gone well with it, thanks to Hubbard. This is Alpuri. Alpuri with the wrong-footed centering kick. Done well, and look at the chase! Oh, terrific! Stefan Destunis. Destunis with seven on his back, flying, flying down the middle of the field to get onto the centering kick. This has been a really good first half for Poverty Bay, and now they're getting out wide. Taumata, he gets caught. Back in Hill, 15 metres from the touchline. Now there's a big fella this way, it's Taumata, he's picked it up again. In he goes, Kiki Taumana gets the try. Well, they're really putting on the points now. This would be the icing on the cake. Good kick, 33 to five. How about that for a first half from Poverty Bay? King Country, I know they've been struggling this year, but they'll be very upset with that. In midfield, Scudder gets upended. And they've dispossessed him as well, so King Country getting away here. Great driving run, mole mole. Mole Mole just short and in support is Brad Jeffries. Well, that's his second try in as many weeks. He got one last week against Whanganui. And Brad, sometimes known as Chad, gets his second try. Taumata's been very prominent. This is Law. Manuel Harmon. And somebody snuck across for a try, have they? Well, well, who comes up with the ball? It's the big fella playing his blazer game, Toru Noa Noa. Gets the try. King Country looking to make some sort of a statement late in the second half. They've certainly got field position here. Now, can they manufacture something? Somebody's gone over. Excellent try. And it's Sisavo Saki. The big blindside flanker who's driven across next to the goalposts. Way out the back. And Manuel Harmon looks for ground. They've got it covered through Moli Moli. No, it's got away from him. Smith, oh, it's got away from him as well. And here comes Hubbard. Hubbard. Well, well, well. Talk about a chapter of errors for the King Country defence. And Tioni Hubbard was the man on the spot. He harassed them into at least one of those errors, possibly even both of them. And he got the dot. Good run coming in here from Walters. Walters looks inside to the big guy, which is Tapsell. Tapsell, that's a bruising run from him. Holmes goes to help out. Speed on the outside, and Terekia. Well, you don't see that too often, do you? The 50's brought up by a man sitting down, scoring a try. Ricky Terekia. Good entertainment for the Poverty Bay crowd today. And King Country looking to lessen the damage a little bit. Digging in deep goes Carmichael. And now they get it out wide. Quick hands. Good try. Scored by Jesse Douglas with good hands from Maximus Dunster at fullback there to give him in space on the touchline, but it's too little and way, way, way too late. The conversion from Josh Eka is over. Good kick, but all they've done is halve the damage, really. 50 points to 26. Big win to Poverty Bay today. Yeah, I think the boys just so, showed really good character. Um, we took a narrow loss last week by two points, and... I think the big thing this week was um, show character and build, build on that character and just get a win today.
And when they did, in some style, it's fair to say, well, we promised you a real belter to finish week five. We have that. The three-time League Cup champs, North Otago, who are hosting the top of the table, South Canterbury. That game coming up straight after the break. Main Freight Rugby and round five of the Bunnings Heartland Championship and we're in Oamaru where South Canterbury, top of the table, South Canterbury are the visitors and they're here to defend some silverware. No fewer than three trophies up for grabs today including the revered Hannon Shield. Well, Colin, not just uh, points up for grab in the Heartland Championship but a lot of silverware. Tell us about some of these magnificent trophies. Well, this particular one here is one of North Otago's favourite sons, named after Phil Gard, obviously all black, uh, an incredible player from out of Kuria. So the Phil Gard Memorial uh, is treasured, treasured by our players as well. That's one we really like to get back. The, the Bill Doreen Memorial, the, the Bill Doreen, he played for both North Otago and South Canterbury, and that was donated. And uh, the Doreen family, they always follow through on that one as well. And, of course, one of the most famous... The, the Hannon Shield, one of the most famous shields in New Zealand rugby, goes back a long way, played between the mid-Canterbury, South Canterbury and North Otago. And now I'm standing here, Tom, so I'm hanging on to this one, but we don't have any of them at the moment. <laughs> I guess no matter which way it goes, the engraver's going to be busy at the end of all this, isn't he? North Otago against South Canterbury from Omaru with the call, Tom Conroy. Ball slow to come out, halfback's tied up. They have to find someone else to do the job, and did so. They're keeping it live at pace at the moment. Jansen's out there wide. Chance on the outside, back on the in to Todd, not needed, over in the corner. What a try to North Otago. Backs and forwards combining. What was an outstanding try. As a consequence of this wet and forget replay, you'll see how North Otago Got over the 22. Great run by Emery. He was instrumental in getting it up that far in the field. Crossed the back line. Big men, small men, all handled. And there was plenty on hand at the end to score the try. The left winger was the man who made the final move over the goal line. So now the throw from Faavai is essential. Something for their endeavours before the break. Short pass to right and he scampers away untouched and the referee confirms South Canterbury have in fact manufactured a try out of nothing the wet and forget replay will show the halfback stooded around the front of the line out and everyone just watched in amazement as he almost walked over the line and suddenly the game changes shape as Briggs looks on there's no change to that score. The halftime break here at Whitestone Contracting Stadium is North Otago 11, South Canterbury 8. Another tap taken by Wright. They want to play this game at Pace South Canterbury, and that's the man to get it to. Near to Gaga. Something always happens with he's involved. Way goes Amato, and that will be a majestic try. Oh, South Canterbury, wow! They have continued with this philosophy of quick taps at penalties, and in the wet forget replay, you can see yet again how many weeks in a row we've seen Calavini Lertagaga actually spark something very special, and Amato, with his long legs, strode it out to the finish and finished that in style. Right, gets that pass away. Now the fan hockey uh, to Mackay. The space on the outside. Um, Bully Rurua cuts out, cuts in, and cuts across and cuts them to pieces. What a wonderful wing that man is, Sorelli Bully Rurua. They've got so many attacking threats out wide. They gave him less than an inch, call it a centimetre, and he took the rest himself in the wet and forget replay. Once he got his hands on the ball, the right winger, he chopped, he changed, and he brushed off what defenders were there and scored by the posts. Magnificent comeback from South Canterbury. On they go, North Otago. And really had a shock to the system 
the lead taken away from them in style. And now a chance to get back. Jansen again, turned and twisted. It's kept to bay. Matthews, Mugalogo, into the corner. And the try given. A little first five, a brilliant score in the corner. Had absolutely no room to play with. Stayed in the air, got the ball down in the in goal area safely. And a try confirmed. Wow, we've had some tremendous tries scored today. Davidson got it out of there. I don't know how. Leah Taganga. He got within five, ball in closer. And they're getting there in great strides. And it'll be Luke Glenn with a try. And we're looking at a, an absolute cliffhanger here. Farvai lunges forward, can't reach the goal line. North Otago desperate to dispossess, but there's just no way. They're letting the ball go at the moment. And a penalty has gone the way of the visiting side. And when you look at 30 seconds to go and three points the lead, you know what they'll be doing. The crowd have enjoyed this match. Not the results so much, but the quality of football has been outstanding at times. And it will be South Canterbury. It's a make sure of this one. That penalty. And the game is over. And South Canterbury have triumphed. They stay at the top of the table. Final score here. North Otago 27, but South Canterbury the victors 33. We've got Kay Gard, widow of Phil, to present to the South Canterbury captain our very prestigious Phil Gard Memorial Trophy. Well, Nick, there was a comeback and a half in that second uh, stanza. It was. You know, we, we expected a lot from North Otago, and they really um, they put it to us in that first half, and it really shocked us. Um, we had to regroup at half time. Um, we got back into the lead, and then they come back again. You know, they, they wouldn't lie down, and it took a big effort from our guys off the bench. I thought they were outstanding, and to seal the deal in the end. So, confirming your round five results, Tim's very were impressive at Boyd Park, 52 35 winners. So much to celebrate East Coast win over Bullock. Well done to all. South Canterbury got the chocolates and Omaru probably may have put on 50. The King Country tight one and Marston Wild Bush 1918 and Wanganui looked the goods in Cook's Garden. So what does that do to our round five results? Now just a reminder to everyone, no semi-finals this year. But as it stands at the moment, 1v2 play for the Meads Cup, 3v4 for the Hall Cup. So South Canary v Tim Valley, one and two. Wanganui, as it stands, would host the Hall Cup, three v four. But Poverty Bay, Mid Canary, and North Otago still very much in the mix. Now, if you want to take a good look at that standings and work out what's happening over the next three weeks, head to allbacks.com, click on the Heartland tag. In Main Freight True Blue this week, we go inside the King Country Rams to meet three guys we know one another pretty well. Here we are on a lovely day in Gisborne uh, today for the uh, Heartland Championship match between the TLC King Country Rams and Poverty Bay. I have in front of me here the uh, Dunster clan who will be turning out today uh, in, in quite a, a unique uh, situation today also with North King Country still in level three lockdown. There was a call to arms and uh, Aaron Dunster, the, the assistant Fords coach, uh, answered that call. So as you're looking forward to the game today? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm um, pretty uh, in a bit of a different sort of a circumstance, and um, I'm, I'm pretty happy to get out with the boys and, and help out where I can. Because if you come off uh, the bench today, mate, and earn your uh, 110th cap for the King Country Rugby Union, it'll be quite a unique feat uh, having a player out there uh, playing alongside his son and his nephew. And it could have been your other son, Carney, if he wasn't in level three. So it's quite uh, a unique feat for your family. Yeah, no, it is, um, Kurt. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud and uh, just hope the body can uh, keep up with it. And I know um, Carney, will, he's, he's back at home and he's really gutted that he couldn't be here with us too. But, um, yeah, the circumstances put, it, put us here. So um, this is where we are. Outstanding. And Cruz, you're playing your eighth cap today for, for King Country. What's it going to be like? I know you've played alongside your old man in club footy. What's it going to be like out there today when he comes on? Yeah, no, it's just... Um, Pretty excited to get out there, 
not every day you get to um, put the old boots on in a rep game with your old man, so yeah, pretty excited for that, yeah. Maximus, your sixth cat today for King Country. You're following in your, your dad Jero's footsteps. You're going to have the old unk out there at some stage. How are you going to control the old fella? Oh, no, I can't really control him, eh? Just like a loose cannon. He tells us, no, no doing these naughty stuff, and then once he's on, it's all go. <laughs> in rugby news this week, an article on the Chiefs and All Blacks hooker Samasoni Takiaho the latest in a seemingly never-ending line of hookers that we have in New Zealand. A young man who came from Tonga as a 15-year-old with no English and is now enrolled at university for a law degree. That says something. Next week, Labour Weekend, look at this, will you? Horofanoa Kapiti against Thames Valley, four playing two. Mid Canterbury against Poverty Bay, six against five. And South Canterbury playing Whanganui, one against three. I'll tell you what, they'll all start, but only three of those teams will finish on top of their game. Our thanks to all of our sponsors, to Main Freight Special People, Special Company. Still love your land. Wet and forget our products work. You don't. Isuzu D-Max Tough. Thanks to all the folks all around the country who help us out week in, week out, at all the unions in the Heartland Championship.